Well, hello, I'm Joe Karras, and you join me at the beautiful, stunning Western Pools today. And we're on the Stretton Pool. It's quite an interesting peg. It's probably 18 to 19 metres wide today, which means that the far bank is well out of reach of the pole. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you a few little ways of targeting the far bank when I haven't actually got a pole to use. So what I've set up, I've got a waggler up, I've got a little bomb and I've got a method feeder. I'm just gonna run you through how I go about using the different approaches to target that far bank. So what I'm doing to start with, I've just got a tiny little waggler on, 11 foot, 11 foot pellet waggler rod. I've got it set about two foot deep at the moment. I'm firing six mil pellets quite generously towards the reeds. Basically what I'm trying to do is create a bit of competition over there. So I've been, like I say, quite generous with the feed. I'm actually trying to get a few pellets to go into the reeds and then try and get my float as tight as I can right among them reeds. So just, just be, you know, just keep, keep it going in. You've got to be really busy with this. It's not about leaving you floating very long. Just keep it going in, keep, keep the feed going in, keep that float going in, and eventually it'll get your reward. It's only a two AAA waggler that, so just keep it going in. It settles straight away as well. It's, it's a foam float. So as soon as it hits the water, it's fishing. It's really important that, because most of your bites will come. You're gonna get one, sort of four or five seconds, and you might as well reel in, because you just ain't gonna get a bite. So I'm just trying to, trying to get nice and tight to that far bank. There we go, we caught a fish. So I'm catching all sorts of fish today. Eyed, cruisions, odd carp, odd F1. That's the left one. Biggest fish in the world, but they all add up when you're in and out catching lots of fish. Nice little fish. Slip the hook out. I'm just using a size 18 KKM hook, an 013 hook length. So, you know, nice light gear, but, but balanced tackle. Got a nice soft rod. The 11 foot Monster X Waggler is a, is a nice soft rod. Just fishing banded 6 mil pellet at the moment. Often what I like to do, as soon as I've baited up, I'll plop the waggler in front of me just like that and then feed probably once or twice. Just try and get the fish revved up and then try and get those pellets. Try and get my waggler in amongst them. So it's really busy. Really, really busy fishing. There we go, nice fish. Noticeable actually on that chuck. When I fed, there was a few carp sort of cruising around and I got one I say a couple of seconds into the cast just keep your rod nice and low when you're playing them because I say we've only got an 18 hook on which is quite important when these fish are the pressured fish and they know which one's got the hook on it so now I have pull here at Western which is nice it actually runs cold water through the lakes, especially on days like this when it's really hot and it just, fish are just full of beans as a result. This waggler's a really enjoyable sort of way of fishing. It's actually a homemade waggler that I'm using. It's a, it's a Corum inline blob that I've just adapted to make it into a little waggler and it's a, it's a lovely little set up for this sort of small commercial where you're only fishing maximum 18, 19 metres really. You know, the float's kind of bottomed out at that distance, but today it's absolutely perfect. So I'm conscious now that I've had this fish on, you know, a little while now. So I'm, I'm itching to get some more pellets in. So as soon as I net this fish, I'll get a few more pellets in. It's the idea, we want to get them really excited Get the fish excited and grubbing around in them reeds and then you get plenty of bites. Pull in here. Nice fish, like common carp. There he comes. Lovely. Nice fish on the wag. I'll just pop him up, show you. Right in there. Nice common. Lean mean fighting machine. 
pellets. Yeah, we've got to get them pellets back in though because we're trying to get them, like I say, we're trying to get them fish competing and excited for food going in the water. So the reason obviously, even though the fish are feeding really, really shallow, you know, you can see the fish inches deep. It's no good actually fishing with the float inches deep. You, you want a little bit of a fall because what happens is you're actually trying to catch them on the fall route as opposed to the, uh, the splash, if you know what I mean. You're waiting for the pellets to sort of go past their noses as opposed to sitting there. So Interesting that carp actually came away from the bank. It's actually a bad cast, but it went under, so it can't have been that bad. They're just in and out all the time. That's a nice cast. It's got a chance, that has. Where's a... Oh. Look at that one there. There's one gobbin on the top. We'll have a look at him, see if we can get him. Right on his nose. He's got a chance, that has. Oh. <laughs> One thing about this approach, if you do, you will see an odd fish, especially as you've been feeding a while. Don't be frightened to have a little chuck at them. You know, these fish can be mugged, especially on a day like today when it's so hot. So, obviously, loose feeding like this, while the conditions are like this, you know, you want to be fishing up in the water, waggler. But later on in the session, I've also prepared some pellets and ground bait and things to fish a method feeder underneath where I'm feeding and I fully expect you know in a, in a little while when it cools down a little bit maybe get a breeze on the water in a bit that'll probably catch some some fish on the method you know when you're fishing like this you, you want everything needs to be the tackle needs to to work in harmony with what you're doing you know it's no good having a 13 foot waggler rod on a peg like this because it just be it would just be cumbersome so I've got an 11 foot pellet waggler rod which is the perfect sort of length for this game Picks up the, you know, picks the line up quick, so you can hit those bites. But, but is nice, makes casting easy. I've just got that matched up with 520 centris reel, um, which is actually loaded with 013 power line. Which, you know, it might seem light as a as a reel line, but when you're using a tiny little float like this, you actually need it. So I've had a brilliant. Waggler session. I'm thinking, showing you a few little method feeder tricks now. Try to catch on the, on the bottom underneath where, where I've been firing those pellets in. And another little string to your bow when you face with a little, you know, swim like this where you, that far bank's out of pole range. Oh, it's a nice fish, this one. You sum up with a waggler, keep the bait going in. Keep casting. It's a nice little light float and you will get the rewards eventually, even on a tough hot day like this. Nice mirror. Quality fish. Weston's absolutely full of these big, big carp. And they're what they make all the difference in the matches. The hide and everything are lovely to catch, but it's these brutes that you need to catch. I've only got very, like I say, I've only got that 013 main line on, which is a light main line, but with a soft, soft set drag, you, ain't, you won't have any problems. Especially with a rod like this, the 11 foot Monster X. It's, a bit backbone, but it's still nice and soft. Here it comes. Mitching to have a go on the method, I must admit now though. See if there's some fish underneath. That's scrap in here.
And here she comes. Just be patient when you're playing them, there's no rush. Just gotta get them out. Fishing's not been easy today, so last thing you wanna do is lose one. There we go. Of course, another option when you're faced with a peg like this that's uh, just when you're faced with a peg like this where it's you know sort of 18 meters wide just out of pole range is of course the method feeder. As we all know, deadly tactic. And today, now we've dropped on the bottom underneath them loose fed, loose fed pellets, the method is proving to be a hit with beautiful mirrors like this. Hang on. Steady on old girl. Nice fish. Put them in the net. So what I've done, obviously I've built the swim up, loose feeding those pellets for the waggler. And it's, it's still really hot, but it has, there's a bit of a breeze now. Just feels right to have a go on the bottom. And I've actually just dropped underneath with a method feeder and a three good carp and three chucks, which when they're all like that, sort of seven, eight pound, you know, it's a real bonus. So all I've got on is a 30 gram ICS method feeder. I've got one of the Ready Tide MCM Uclemps, which is a size 14 MCM with a band on, 019, just four inches, super, super simple stuff. It's an inline feeder to comply with fishery rules. And all I'm fishing, it's just a banded pellet, just a six mil pellet, as simple as it comes. It's a great hook bait for the method feeder, has been for years, and it'll continue to be. And all I'm doing, I'm just loading the method with fishery pellets, giving it a firm squeeze. I'm actually double layering. It's obvious the fish want a bit of bait now, so I'm just double skinning the feeder, so there's loads of bait on there. Give it one little squeeze. Don't go too mad, because the pellets are quite sticky. And then all I'm doing, I'm just sort of a bit of a gentle lob. It's, 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 it's a really nice, comfortable distance. I've got a nine foot rod, a 320 inertia reel, lovely little setup for this sort of, sort of distance. I'm just sort of plopping it in over there. Right there, in amongst the reeds, and I don't think that'll take too long to get a bite. Don't really tie it up to the feeder or anything. I just leave the, leave the line on the top. It's a 30 gram weight, it's not gonna move. And the line will just sink itself anyway. Still double pouching pellets over the top. So, you know, I've got to keep myself, give, give myself the option of maybe chucking the waggler. If I see some more fish, I'm not seeing any fish swirl now, which suggests to me the fish have actually gone down. But as I'm gonna keep feeding them pellets, there's every chance, you know, they'll start swirling again. And I might have to pick the waggler up, but at the moment, the meth feed is where it's at. It's worth just chatting as well about how to, how to prepare your bait because I've got some two mil fishery pellets, but I've also got some ground bait. And it's a good, good tip that is, on really hot days like this, it's often the case that ground bait's really good. Days like this, when high pressure, red dot, flat calm, and the fish aren't really interested. Brilliant paste fishing days. And I always think, you know, putting ground bait on a method in these conditions is a good option. So all I've got there is a bag of Thatchers, Sonia Bates Thatchers, uh, lovely fine strong fish meal ground bait that fish love. Of course, can't go anywhere without the two mil fishery pellets. All I've done, I've soaked them, I've given them 20 seconds in the pellet wetter. Small fish. 20 seconds in the pellet wetter. Drain, them, drain the water off, give them a good shake, and just sort of let them stand for about half an hour. Loads of these little fish, little crewy. Yes. Nice little fish. Not the target, but a nice fish all the same. So yeah, I've just given them a, like I said, a 20 second dip in the pellet where it's warm, the water's warm. So there's no need to soak them for any longer than that. Let them stand and then one other little tip I do, because when you're fishing fishery pellets, you never, you know, you can never be quite sure what the batch is going to be like. So 
All I do, I have a bag of uh, pellet binder with me. And if it is, if the pellets don't want to stick to my method, then I'll just give it a dusting. You don't need much. A teaspoonful sprinkled over, you know, three pints of micros is more than enough. You just want them just tacky, not overly sticky. Just a gentle lob over there. Up to them reeds. Wait for the next bite. In fact, next chuck, I'll try putting that ground bait on. There is, of course, a third option, especially when we're loose feeding pellets like this, and that's a straight lead. And it has to be said, on, on some venues, especially when you're targeting these bigger carp like we are at Weston, sometimes the, the straight lead is a better option than even the method feeder. These carp, they absolutely love feeding on hard pellets. And there's some days where they're just not really interested in micros and ground bait and baits like that. So the beauty of this system is I can just take the feeder off and try the bomb. Within a few seconds, I don't need another rod or anything like that. I can just slide my feeder off, off, the, off the ICS stem. Nine foot rod's lovely. And I'm back in action with the bomb. So, of course, with the waggler, the method and the bomb, I've got three really good options there to keep fish coming. Another nice carp there. Hook hold with these MCM hooks is fantastic. Never going to lose them. So good, you struggle to get the hook out. Nice. There's one thing that, that's worth mentioning. When you're using a method and a method mould, the way I like to actually put the pellets in the feeder, I lay my hook bait in first, fill it up and I actually thumb it down. Not a firm press, but just a nice gentle thumb. And it just allows you to get a bit more bait on. You know, you want to be positive. Give it a firm squeeze into the mould. Then just give it a couple of squeezes and out she pops. And what I'm doing, like I say, I'm double skinning it. So it's where that binder helps because it's no, absolutely perfect. Little squeeze. And what I'm trying to do, if I don't get a bite today within a minute, I'm sort of coming back in and re-chucking. I think the fish are active today, they want to feed, and I'm prepared to feed them. So, obviously today, I've got a bit of a, a guide when it comes to hook baits and things like that as well, because if I was say it, a venue that's heavily influenced by carp anglers, you know, venues like Barston come immediately to mind. Baits like wafters and boilies and, you know, that kind of bait work really, really well. But I, I tend to find on venues like this, pellets are the, better, are the number one, because they just see so many pellets that that is what they, they're eating them, that it's not, it's a bit different to them big carp waters. So I don't bother with any fancy additives or liquids or anything like that on venues like this. I just think they're so used to fishery pellets that they're the number one on venues like this. Nice F1. That is a nice fish. Some big F1s in this venue. Someone caught on £10 the other week, which is a great big fish in anybody's book. Really coming alive now, the swim. So the swim's absolutely rocking and rolling now. Just It's a carp every single chuck in on the method. Good fish as well, real good fish. Just chucking as tight, tight to them reeds. Look at that. Motorboat. Brilliant workout for these nine foot rods. But what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get this one out and then quickly just show you how simple it can be. Just to switch to that bomb and hopefully we'll catch some fish on that as well because there's loads of carp there at the moment. It'd just be nice, like I say, sometimes they want to eat hard pellets. It might be on your venue that they don't want micros, so we've got to have that bomb option as well. Oh, go on, son. Look at the drag going. Unbelievable. Worth touching on the main line, it's just six pound Sinking feeder mono, really strong stuff it is. 
belts and braces sort of line. Yeah, another nice comment. Lovely. Nice way to end the method feeder session. Hold him up because he's a nice one. Get that hook out of arm's way. Look at that, lovely. Doesn't take long to do a weight when you're catching them as quickly as this. In the keep net. Right. Now the beauty is, obviously, if, if it is a, a hard pellet venue, then, you know, the, the method might not work, but thanks to this little system, the ICS system, all I've got to do is take the tail rubber off, press the stem, and off comes the feeder. Now it's just a case of getting my bomb, in this case a 20 gram, sliding it onto the stem, putting my tail rubber back on, and we're fishing. I'm actually going to use the short hook length to start with, um, something I've had quite a bit of success on actually is using a four inch hook length with the bomb. I think it's so direct and when they're feeding like this it's a really effective way. It's as simple as this, all I do bait up with my six mil pellet that I'm feeding and what I like to do, a bit like with the waggler, I'll fire in my pellets first and then try and cast my bomb right among them. So we're trying to get obviously tight to them reeds but it's nice to the fish will come into them pellets and then the sound of my bomb going in well, hopefully, ring that dinner bell again. I chuck, the, chuck the bomb right on top of it, and then we'll wait for a bite. There are days when, you know, a long hook length can, be, can work really well, a foot, 15 inches, that kind of thing. Even up to two foot on deeper venues where you, you're trying to get the, foot, the hook bait to fall. It's all about experimenting. We've got a quick change bead on, and we've got different hook lengths, you know, ready to go, so, not a problem we can experiment but I like to st start on this short one and if I can catch on this great because the hook hold will be fantastic again it's not bomb and pellet fishing although you might be tempted to just leave it in and leave it in and leave it in until you get one I find it much better to keep the bait going in keep that little lead going in which is like I say it's 20 gram it makes a lovely little plop and you're almost getting a carp's attention as the bomb hits the surface, they'll follow it down and nail, nail that up bait. So I'll only leave it in for sort of a minute or two before I'm back in. I'm feeding all the time, quite aggressively, you know, decent amount of pellets that, 30 pellets probably at a time, six mils. There we go. What this is, not the intended quarry is what this is. Ah, yes. <laughs> One little tip when you're fishing like this is to change your hook bait regularly. Um, if you think about it, you're feeding hard pellets. So the last thing you want is a slimy pellet that's been on for quite some time. So every time I come in, I'm not lazy. I, I, you know, I change my hook bait. It only takes a few seconds so that the pellet on the hook is the same as what I'm feeding. So feed first, plop that bomb over the top. I'm actually getting liners all the time, so I don't think it'll be long before we catch one. But it's just another option. Like I say, there's definite days I can think of this place, Lindome, venues like that on these small chuck venues where the far banks away from pole range loose fed pellets and a bomb can really work well and it obviously it, play, it plays hand in hand with the waggler as well because like I said a few minutes ago you know there might be a, an opportunity in a, in a bit where the fish come up again they aren't at the moment but who knows another 20 minutes of feeding fish might come up and I could pick the waggler back up and catch fish really quickly so it's all about reading your swim keeping the bait going in making the most of it. So already I'm thinking the method's probably the best option today because you know I'd, I'd have probably caught one by now on the method. But it's worth showing you the the options you've got. So there you have it, that's the end of my session here on the Stretton Lake at Western Pools. 
I've had a brilliant, brilliant day. The method feeder has been without a doubt the best tactic today. The waggler's been good and the bomb not so much, but here they are, lovely cracking net of fish. Some really nice carp, as well as some silvers, crusions, F1s, bit of everything in there. Off to fight another day. Thanks for watching.